Hello! I should be down here. Hello! Let's try that again. How you all doing? Good to see you, Darius, Pondpimp, Jace, Shamela. Hey, Entryat's here. Won't be able to join you today. Aw, oh, man. Audio video, okay, that's cool. We're starting an optimistic kind of start to the chat. Right, so I'm going to try and beast through a few things. We're going to be continuing on from where we were last week. Um, there were... Okay, so, so last week we just turned a load of stuff from the paper into code, and we got to a certain point, um, and at the end somebody asked, hey, couldn't we um, visualize some of the stuff we had so far? And I thought we couldn't, but I was totally wrong. So what I've done is I've started getting the terrain um, and water rendering ready. Uh, which we're going to have a look at first. Um, next thing... <laughs> uh, okay, not to get distracted by the chat. There's so much to do this time. Um, oh yeah, so there has been another quick list release, and I totally wasn't ready for it, because the last one, the, the cadence has been about a month, a month and a half. Uh, this one's been out after just three and a bit weeks, which is awesome except that I hadn't got all the stuff into the release branches. So nothing is broken, but there's nothing new yet. So you're gonna have to wait a bit longer for all the performance stuff that I was talking about the other week. Uh, so that's so that's that. Um, quick check in the chat to see how we're doing. I am a vile scoundrel. Yes, I'm British. Um, hey, Barad, how you doing, man? Good morning to New Zealand as well. Oslo's doing good over here. Right, so, visualizing stuff. I'm on the wrong computer, let me switch, and then we'll get going. So, I am going to just stop this a second. <laughs> Make it stop. Um, and we're gonna have a look at some stuff. So the first thing was, we needed some terrain. Uh, so the simplest thing to do was to make some Perlin noise. Um, so if I just go and find that in here. So I made a really simple pipeline. This is a vertex shader that will just, um, basically it's a pass-through pass shader for a quad. It takes vector two uh, positions for a vertex and emits the position in clip space and some UVs. And then the next stage is just gonna call Perlin noise, scale it a bit so it, we get some decent height and stick it as the um, first element in this vector. It also returns two other vectors which I'll come back to in a second. Um, then we put together a regular old pipeline just saying we're going to call these two GPU functions using one as the vertex shader and one as the frag shader. Um, then we have a function here that just runs the pipeline. Um, with, the, with a quad stream we get this from Nineveh. So that's uh, already there. We um, then have, <laughs> we, um, oh yeah, so, so then if we take this basically, sorry, I'm getting myself distracted here. Um, if we run blit noise as a frame, which is just gonna do clear and then swap afterwards. Come on now. Um, we get, yeah, we get kind of what we expect. These are very hard colors because obviously this is only gonna show up to one and down to zero. So these numbers are going to be minus numbers. These numbers are going to be ramping up to 20. But this is going to give us our hills eventually. If we scaled this down, we would see something a bit more gradual. So if I could turn this 20 into one and ran it again, you would see the kind of more of a gradient going on there. But we want this height as we're going to see in a minute. So we can spit this out, which is easy. Um, so now we need to dump this to a texture um, so we can use it in our um, pipelines later. So if you may remember that last week we made um, some terrain state and we had three textures and this was to hold the state of our, our terrain and the kind of other information that we're gonna need to do the erosion. So the first texture was gonna store, um, because the textures are store vector fours, um, we're gonna store the height of the terrain, the depth of the water, which I'm gonna call water height most of the time, the paper says height, so. I'll probably jump between the two. Um, and the amount of sediment that's currently in that water at that position on the map. So that's gonna be in one texture. We're gonna have a water flux map. The water flux is the amount of water that's trying to get out 
or into, but out mainly from a given point. So for the point, it's the the water trying to go, um, yeah, in four directions. So left, right, up and down. Um, so for any point here, left, right, up and down, water flowing out. Water velocity is we um, do some calculations or we're going to do some calculations, which works out the velocity of the water um, for a given point. This gives us a field over the entire map. And then, because we need to render into some of these textures, we're going to... So one of the important things is we can't um, read out of a text. We can't write into a texture we're also reading from. So we're going to um, have to create two instances of this and read out of one and write into the other. And then once we've done that, so we say read out of this one and write into this one, and then we'll read from this one and write into this one. This is called flip-flop. So we're just going to flip-flop between those two um, blocks of state and we'll do our calculations in between. Now, we also, if we're going to render into textures, we need an FBO. So we're going to create one of those and bind these three textures. So we see this function here allows us to uh, make the terrain state. I've done a bit of cleanup from last week because while, I've been, while I was coding on the stream, I was trying to... I was getting ahead of myself, basically. I was trying to imagine what the code was going to look like and make it something readable. Um, but when I started trying to visualize some stuff, I realized I had things in slightly the wrong order. Something's going on in chat. Ah, there's all kinds of acronyms going on. And I have no idea what's happening. But Barad, yes. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. We'll do it less, depending on if it's good or bad. I'll leave that to you. So when we make the terrain state, we're going to make a few textures. They're going to be 512 by 512. That's our map size for now. Um, they're all going to be VEC4 textures, so it's going to be four float components. Um, and then in, when we make the state, we're going to sample those. So we've got a sampler into that texture. And we're going to make an FBO where the, the um, height water sediment map is attachment zero, the water flux map is attachment one, and the water velocity map is uh, attachment two. And this is why this frag shader here returns three vector fours. Because when we bind um, the terrain state FBO down here and render our noise, we're going to render into those three attachments. We're doing multiple, um, what is it called? Multiple target rendering. I can't remember now. There's a proper name for it. Um, so that's cool. So then all we have to do is just bind an FBO and run blit noise, which gave us this, and this will be written into those textures, which is fine. So that's where we're going to start from. Um, and then we have to draw some stuff. So if I just go and I'll reset the state and run this, it looks a bit weird. Have I not compiled it since I screwed with that texture? Sorry, with that um, shader. Let's do that and there we go reset state um, the shader is kind of interesting so if I go to things first you can see I've added a um, I've specialized the draw up uh, method for the terrain to pick whichever the current state is and then call the terrain pipeline which I've just added uh, passing in the water height sediment map. We're just going to be using the height and the water from that. The terrain height and the water height. If we go to there, there's a few things to go through. And one of them will be of interest to Shimera because I'm finally doing something with um, geometry shaders. But there is action going on. Ah, Shimera's doing some Ludum Dare stuff soon. Nice. <laughs> Designing military camera, that's how you fund cap. Yes. I am definitely a military man. You can tell from my military bearing. <laughs> Pizza military camera, it's basic. Yeah, man. I know that, like, say, we've got this ugly terrain right now. Not everything can look as good as that pizza did. Um... <laughs> so, we've confused Romero. Things are good. I'll tell you in a second, shit. It's fine. So, to render the terrain, first thing we're going to do is very much like um, what we were render, how we were rendering before. We get the position and the. We don't actually need this normal. We're not going to use it. And the UV. Um, we're going to unpack. We're going to get the 
height out of the height water sediment map and we're going to set that as the height we can basically just add that height to our vertex position and that's giving us this displacement then we go through the normal stuff putting things into clip space and we take the uv and pass everything on i don't think we use this normal anywhere so i don't know why it's still here take that out Ooh. Right, then we get down to the geometry stage. Now, we've got this big old lattice. So it's, what, 512 by 512 uh, mesh. And we need something exactly the same for the water. So we could create another buffer with the same thing and do two render passes, but that seems wasteful and just a bit boring. So uh, what I've done instead is added a geometry shader to duplicate the terrain mesh and texture it separately. We're going to look at the texturing in a minute because it's kind of funky, but also fun. Um, so in the geometry shader because we're dealing with primitives now rather than just vertices um, we are getting see sorry let's, let's step back a second out of our vertex stage we return um, positions and the uv the position of the uv uh, because that's per vertex and we're now working with primitives we're going to have one uv for every uh, vertex in the primitive because we're doing triangles that means three so we've got three uvs coming in here also there's an implicitly defined uh, variable in geometry shaders defined in glsl called gl in so we're going to, to take the first element from that and get its position and that's the the position of one corner of this triangle so we get the three triangle positions and i go ahead and calculate some uv stuff i'm going to ignore this for a minute i will come back to it and when you're dealing with geometry shaders, your primitives come in, unless you emit some new geometry, nothing will come out. Like, so you don't, you're not adding to the original geometry. You have to emit all the geometry you want for the rest of the stream. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is emit our original triangle. So we, we have some triangle in here. Let's say this bit here is a triangle. We're gonna have to emit these points Pretty much exactly as they were so we're going to omit the um the position unchanged for these three this emit macro is um behaves a lot like the return values from your vertex shader so the first thing is the the gl position and that's going to be taken by glsl straight away and the rest of them are values that are going to be passed along to the next stage so we emit the first triangle, we emit one vertex, emit the second vertex, emit the third vertex, and then end that primitive. So that's one triangle done. And then we are going to emit the water mesh. And the way we do this is we look up in the um, in this map using one of our UVs, and we get the uh, value which contains the water, sorry, the, the terrain height the water height and the sediment. This is a really weird name actually for this. This should be, oh, it's height, water, sediment or something like that. doesn't really matter. It's not much more readable that way. Um, the water height is the second element in that vector. So we pull that out and then we add on to the original um, position. So say this one, we add on the water depth or water height. So now we get a vertex that's here and maybe here and maybe here and that's going to be a new triangle that's going to be our water mesh so however high the water is at any given point we're going to put new triangles there new vertices there and that's going to give us our water and we'll see that in a minute and so we just do that for each one and then we have a fragment shader which is dirt simple all we do is we um we take the uv we look in the albedo texture and then we multiply it by some ambient light so we can set whatever here and we get different lighting amounts. Um, I haven't done these shadows yet because we don't actually have the normals yet. That will be done soon. Couldn't you just draw on the plane twice, uh, twice? Once adjusting for the height and the vertex shader and once not. Yeah, but it was boring. Um, anyway, I thought it was more interesting to actually use the geometry shader, especially because you'd been asking about it. Sorry, Shin was asking a question on the stream. Um, <laughs> and what else did we do oh yeah there was one funky thing because um, we've got a texture this 
Um, I didn't want to pass in two textures and switch between them with an if, because there were some rules to do with divergence and stuff I couldn't be bothered to remember. So all I did instead was create a texture which had the dirt... Where is it? Is it play with verts. The dirt and the water together in one texture. So this half is the dirt and this half is the water. Oh, and you can see the water's coming in now. Um, and obviously then we need to modify the UVs. So we, we have the normal UVs so we can look up in the height water sediment map. Um, but we need modified ones for the fragment shader. So that's all we're doing here is we're halving the UV in the X direction. So it's, it's in this range. Let me switch over to pen again. So at the moment, this is zero, this is one, and this is one. So it goes like this. We're just going to half it in the X, so our new texture, our new UVs are going from zero to 0 0.5. And then down here, we add 0 0.5, so we're in this range. And that just gives us UVs for the two things. <laughs> Shimura, I've been asking for actually useful cases. Well, fuck you, buddy! I tried to do something nice. Yeah, it was fun. So I did it. So, that's that. We have some terrain and some water. And now I'm just going to get back to hacking away on whatever we were doing. So let's go up to the... Oh, this is in the wrong file. Where is the rain function? Here we go. So right now we're getting... Let me just speed up this rainfall. Because there's no water flow yet, um, there's something really stupid happening with the water. Until we simulate flow, we so say we have this terrain. When water droplets land, say here, let's do a blue water droplet, doo -doo -doo, they're just going to stack up on each other. They're going to add, but we'll get like droplets of water landing on top of each other. And they don't flow anywhere, so they just build up like snow, but perfectly everywhere. Because <laughs> even snow would fall downhill. So we end up with another terrain looking mesh layered exactly on top of the first one, which is why you're seeing hills in the blue here. Which is really daft, but we'll fix that once we've got some water simulation going. Um, so, let's get rid of this nonsense and get this out of the way. And, I mean, if we allow this to run, let's just run it in zero, you'll eventually see the water, let's run it faster than that, 500. We'll see the water slowly climb and then we'll be under the water. We'll have to make this look good one day. But today is not that day. So, reset. And we'll slowly see that water come up again. And we just don't care. Because we have things to do. There it is. Okay, so, then what I did was I took um, the work we did last week writing all these functions. And started putting them into... Um, the specific stages because the paper said there was going to be like three passes or something like this but they didn't say where those passes were in the paper they just kind of expected it to be obvious and to be honest when you start implementing this stuff when you start putting it all together all these GPU functions we made it does become pretty obvious what's going on so or at least it does become pretty obvious where the splits need to be so here we have we're pulling data out of the texture, the, the height, water, and um, sediment details for the position that we're at. Um, the position to the left, so that's at left, um, at right, at top, and at bottom. Um, then we get the flux for this point. And flux L and flux R are just us destructuring that vector into these components. So this is the flux towards the left. And this flux is the flux towards the right flux up and the flux down. Slight subtleties in naming, but um... Oh yeah, link to the paper! Thanks, Palm the Pimp. I will do that now. In the meantime, I will go out of focus. Right, where is that paper? Da -da 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 -da. Here it is. One of them! How that? <laughs> so Shimera says, actually, let me rephrase. I've been asking for you to do work for me, which is to implement a grass shader. Ah, one day. Now I'm being honest. Well, not today. Um, 
better subtly shaded grass. What? Um, oh yes, I see. I'm very slow. Um, I just never know what to expect coming from you guys. Glob Globby whispered. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Alright. Let's get some work done. So, all we did last time really is, well, in this stage, all we have to do is calculate the new amount of rain, which at the moment is just constant. We have a function which adds that rain to the current water height with a time delta. It is as you would expect. There is a time delta. You multiply it by the amount of rain that's been uh, added. For some reason, there's a rain rate scale factor from the paper. No idea why, but they had it in the paper, so I've got it for now as well. Probably will remove that at some point and just change the amount of rain. Um, that was this equation from the paper. And we add that to the current water height, which makes sense. Then we calculate the new flux, which is this stuff here, which is just saying, um, given the current amount of flux in that direction, uh, so add, yeah, take the current amount of flux and add on, uh, dependent on the amount of time that's passed and the area of our virtual pipe that we were talking about before. And based on the, the gravity and the amount of vertical distance the water is traveling, oh sorry, the vertical difference in height between our position and the position that we're interested in, our neighbor position, do some calculations and calculate the new flux. That's roughly it. Then there's multiplying by some k factor, which I don't entirely understand, but it's meant to stop um, us going over. Basically, it's tr trying to make sure we don't use, we don't push more water out of our cell than we actually have to push out, so we can never get negative amounts of water. And then we pack these uh, results into um, our outgoing textures. So we return two values, which is this newly calculated flux which we'll see if that's correct at some point. The uh, terrain height, which hasn't changed. The water plus the rain, which is up here, which is why this, this water here is slowly increasing. And the amount of sediment, which also hasn't changed. So it's, the stuff we're using at the moment is pretty boring and simple. And this is that pipeline, which again is just taking over a quad, doing this erosion step. And then we're gonna write this into a texture uh, with using with FBO bound and here we do a flip and a flop so here we're doing read from the terrain state the first terrain state and write into the second terrain state and then we're going to read from that terrain state and write into the first terrain state so read from one write into the other then read from this one write into that one so we're doing a flip and a flop seems simple enough conceptually but that gives us our first pass of things we'll change this as we need to as we get the next step done then we went through some other calculations and i've started on erosion step one um, where we start cal calculating the velocity of the water so we have to jump back to the paper which is here how handy um let's see where we were so we had done all this k stuff We've got, let's have a look for this. Then we update the water height um, in the cell, which is new water height. This is gonna be this bit here. Let's look at calc new water height. And it should be something like, yeah, the current water height plus um, is delta V divided by two numbers multiplied together. Okay, so yeah, that's the water delta divided by the length of the pipes multiplied, which is still going to be one, um, and then added on to the current water depth. That's our new water height. Then our velocity is this bit, which is this formula here. Okay, so using outflow fluxes, we can calculate the water velocity field 
uh, that is need that that that's going to have to be that is needed to calculate hydraulic erosion and deposition. The calculation of the x component is this, and the y component is calculated in a similar way. That means that it's going to be a vector two. So that's all we do here. Um, so this is calculating that two D vector from where water is going to be flowing. Um, then we get down to here. So I'm going to do one last dip into chat before I focus on this next chunk. Let's have a look. Not much is going on here. <laughs> um, hey, DPT. Why not just rotate F and state, rotate F the state X's and then calling the same function again? I. I don't know. For which one, sorry, in, in this step? Um, I'll see when Shin answers that one. Chat is... Yeah, back is like, what the fuck going on? Pretty much! Um, <laughs> In the step where you pimp on or swapping or whatever. Um, let me look at rotate F and then I'll be able to answer your question. He thinks. Wait a second. Rotate F. Oh, come on, boy. Um... Oh, interesting. Um, maybe because I'm just not used to this function, I think. Macro, rather. Um, yeah, no specific reason. But that is actually quite a good call. So I might use Rotate if in future. That's just nice. Um, yeah, that, that would actually be pretty cool now I think about it. The hyperspec! Yes, it's so good. Um... It's, it's good once you're used to the language. As a learning material, it's fucking annoying. Um, it was for me anyway. Right, okay. Let's get back into this. So, now we're going to look at... We've got our 2D velocity vector, and then we need to start doing erosion. So, the Y component is calculated in a similar way. Yeah, we've done that bit. Okay. Since we know the velocity vector, we can calculate C, which is apparently the water sediment transport capacity represents how much sediment can be transported in a cell. Okay, so that's what it was in the original paper, but I'm not too worried about that. I want to know what this paper does. Where K is a global simulation parameter controlling sediment capacity. There's a tilt angle, which I hope we don't have to do because I'm just lazy and I don't have to deal with that. Um, this has got to be the velocity field the water flow vector in the given cell. That's what we just calculated a minute ago. Um, this empirical formula erodes terrain proportional to the surface type. Oh yeah, I remember this now. Now the reason they moved away from this is they wanted to handle um, some more realistic factors. Like if the water's really deep, there's not much erosion because the water generally is moving slower at lower depths, unless you're getting some kind of salinity modeling and stuff like this, which I'm not going to go into right now. Um, but generally, yeah, deep water, water's going to be moving slower down there. Shallower water, we're going to get a bit more high speed water and erosion. Um, so that's cool. So they did, they put a, um, a ramp function in here, they call it. Looking at this, the, the function, this is Lmax. This is their ramp function. Um, and this is, say, the deeper you go, we're going to change the ramp of how much erosion you do. Um, it's zero when x is less than zero, and it's one when 
it's great when x is greater than kd max whatever that is um, and this is proportional to kd max minus x okay so this is just lerp with clamp between yeah x divided by kd max and then lerp and then clamp and that's it so whatever this is is very simple uh, where kd max is a global simulation parameter con controlling the maximum erosion depth fair enough Oh yeah, so it's going to go from 1 to 0. Fine. That's cool. Um, the function scales down the fluid erosion effects by the water depth, so the erosion will occur only in shallower areas, forcing the simulation to dispose sediment in deeper waters, just like in the real world. Cool. Oh yeah, and they, and they went from taking that 2D um, water vector and translating it into a 3D collision between the water and the terrain surface. So whatever direction it's moving, like the water's going to be flowing this way and then you're going to hit something. Um, and then depending on that difference in angle is how much terrain you're going to break off. Something like this. So we are going to need to implement this. We're going to need to calculate C. So let's... I'm just going to go and close this for now. And let's dump this here. Oops. Okay, so that's what we need to implement. And this is something to do with sediment. Something, something, sediment, something. Let's have a look. It says up here, since we know the velocity vector, we can calculate C, water sed sediment transport capacity. Is that really the capacity though? Or is that the new amount of sediment that's being picked up? I guess we'll we'll see. We'll just call it Calc C for now, and then we'll change the name when we know what the hell's going on. Okay, so let's just make sure that's centered because I'm going to be flitting backwards and forwards on this. Um, where n x y is the terrain surface normal, so we're going to need to get a normal. Um, at the given point, so we're going to need to pass in normal. That's going to be a vec three. And v vector is the three D water flow calculated from the surface tangent, and the two D velocity vector v. Huh. Okay. So they're not showing us that equation. Fair enough. I guess we have to project that down. We we'll might have to look that up, unless one of you lovely people know how to do that. Let's see. It might just be uh, dot producting down onto the... Uh, mm, not sure yet. We'll have to see. Right, this modification erodes more soil if the water collides with the surface and angles close to perpendicular with our model. We observe some ripples. That's really nice. Okay, so at this point there is a decision by using the capacity C. KS. Now, where was KC? I don't remember where that came from. Oh, yeah, KC is a global simulation to controlling sediment capacity. Right, that's its name. Or actually, what did they call it? We have all their variables that they were talking about before. So it's KC, sediment capacity. There we go. And they've got it set to 1 in there. So let's go and add a variable for that. Yeah, well, sediment. Sure. Sediment capacity. That's one. And 
then we've got we're going to negate the normal apparently and we're going to multiply it so it's going to be a dot product of the normal um, and the velocity 3d and then that is going to be scaled by the magnitude, so the length of the 2D velocity. And again, that's going to be multiplied by L max. What was L max? Oh, this limiting function. So we're going to call L max on D1, which was me. I was calculating D2, which was the, this is, see this, this D2 bit is confusing because basically the paper, we calculate D1 here and there's no mention of D2 here, nothing at all. It's all D1. Anytime you see a D, it's D1, D1. You can see where I'm pointing because that's how computers work. Over here, D1, down here somewhere, where is it? Oh, there's another D1 around here somewhere. There it is, D1. And they have no mention of D2, and then suddenly they define D2 using D2. So this is either the last D2, and you're meant to keep something separate, or this is meant to be D1. I'm gonna guess this, I have guessed that this is meant to be D1. When we look in our update, when we get the new water height, I take the current water depth and add the water delta that's been scaled, which makes more sense to me. And that gives us a, a new, I call it water depth here as well. Let's change that to water height for consistency. There we go. So I'm going to assume that was meant to be D1, um, which means that water height is D1. This is what we're going to need. We're going to pass this one in when we get around to it. Where are we? Here we go. So we're going to call Lmax. We're going to have to rename that function um, using the water height. Fair enough. That's going to give us the scaling factor. D from G, Lmax is going to take the water height, which is a float. Let's add to these variables here as well, the ones that we need. We need velocity 3D, which is a vec 3. Not like this, not like this. Uh, we need a 2D1 as well, which we calculated previously. Um, we need the water height, which is a float. And that looks like most of what we've used so far. Yeah, that's fine, let's check chat. Dare I look again? <laughs> no. Um, yep, I'm looking back and I'm seeing... Hey, Pixel Outlaw, how you doing, man? Uh, Shamira, no, I didn't see that you set up logging for this channel, and no, I don't mind. I've actually been keeping the logs for the previous weeks, because I like them. So that's cool. Um, function will be down, mutate all the things, damn right. It's it's locally mutable, it's, it's fine. Um, DVDD, grep, why not silver searcher? Ah, grep's fast enough for me. The answer is pretty much immediate. I don't mind yet. Um, we're getting discussions about Vi. I have nothing I can add there. I never got into it, unfortunately. And let's have a look. Random crap. All right, how 
are you using grip if it's that slow? That's really weird. Anyway, back here. So, we need to do this LMAX. Let's rename this already because it's annoying me. Um, so this is the... Um, That's what it actually is, but that is a very long name. Water depth based. Water depth velocity scale. That'll have to do for now, for the sake of our stream and this tiny resolution. That'll have to do. So, let's put that down here. Do, 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 do. And then we've got some kind of ramp. So we have a, what was the function? Oh yeah, random crap, here we go. Oh yeah, so KD max is a global simulation parameter. Let's go look for that. KD max, here we go, they use 10. Fine, maximal erosion depth. That's excellent, just what I wanted. So then we are going to do um, so if we just divide the water height by the maximal water depth and then clamp between 0 and 1 that's going to get that's going to increase from 0 to 1 as the depth increases from 0 to the maximum depth so then if we do 1 minus Am I reading that right? So 10 minus whatever we're at, so 10 minus 0, 10 minus 1, yada yada, divided by 10, so, yep, that would start at 1 and fall slowly to this is weird actually because this looks like it would start at one and fall slow it's just this portion would start at one and fall slowly towards zero and then that would make it from zero to one i are confused <laughs> the chat is just absolutely exceptional at just talking the most random crap. Um, we're talking. <laughs> apparently, the conversation is onto curtains right now. This is the quality of the people that are drawn in by this kind of stuff. I can't say I'm surprised. Scales down by the water depth. Yeah, that should be fine. That should be fine. So if the water height is zero, then it's going to be zero. And then one minus zero is one. So yeah, that'll be maximum. And then if the water height is 10, then this part will be one. This will be one, this will be zero. Yeah, that's fine. This will do just fine for now. And that means this function should compile. 
Let's bring up the REPL over here just in case something is missing and it's being kind to me, too kind. Nope, all the functions there, that's good. And then we will go down here and just call C. So we have a few things we need to get now. Um, we need a normal, we need the water height, which is fine, we've already got that. We've got the velocity 2D, which we've already got, and then we also need the velocity 3D, which we don't have yet. This will be interesting. So, we need the normal. So, let's go and look up how to get the normal from a height map. The reason I'm looking this up again is I'm pretty sure the one in Nineveh is buggy. I think that's what we saw before. Um, so, normal um, from height map. There we go. And I've been here before, clearly. Okay, so example GLSL code. Perfect. Let's trust him. Quark, our lord and saviour. Thank you, Quark. Yeah. Um, we've already got a lot of that data packed out, so let's just use it. So, normal is we're going to have so this part here. So we've got it's going to be height. Okay, so this is a four point height, which works fine with what we're doing. So, um, what am I doing? Height left, height right, height top, and height bottom. And what are we going to do with this? We are going to. size in this case. I guess that's the distance in yeah, distance between the cells. Currently ours is one, so we'll just go with that. So... Size X, Y. So one, zero, I guess. And the third component was minus um, height right actually he's not using much of these is he? S01 I'm not getting nervous about what's going on here. Oh no, fair enough. Yep, that'll be fine. Never mind me. And then... Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, high left, high right. Normalize! Of course. VB... 
Terra 1. Make sure that I'm reading this right, which is top and bottom. And then he calculates the result to be the cross product of PA and VB. Oh, and the, and the height in the center. Interesting. But it doesn't need to be a VEC4, and the result is a bump vector. XYZ equals normal, A equals height. So we only need this part, because the cross product is going to be another VEC3. So this should be what we want. A second if we go to that again we're not actually using height itself anywhere so we don't need it that was only if we wanted the bump so that's fine so this will be x of data at left x of data at right x of data at top so data at bottom. I'm not going to worry about cleaning this stuff up for a while because last week that did not help. So we've got a normal. One down. Two to go. Well, no, one to go. We need the velocity 3D. How were they getting that? Okay, so they were saying that, moreover, we included true 3D collision between water and terrain surface, where normal is a terrain surface normal point. Da, 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 and V is the 3D flow vector calculated from the surface tangent and the 2D velocity vector. Okay. So I guess we're going to project that 2D vector down into 3D and I'm not sure how to do that immediately. Um... Ah, uh, the good old tradition of copy pasting from Stack Overflow. Still works? Or it might work. If it works, good. If it not, we'll ditch it and use the other thing. Um, stack sort was cute. Hey, Seba, good to see you, man. <laughs> Young Lena, yes. Normalize. It's approximately normalization, but worse. Um... DVD. You're right, I didn't check here before I fixed it. Um, <laughs> Good lord. What is going on? Tyler Killeen is being a bit shitty at the moment. Some of the times she just doesn't seem to add anything. Uh, other than the fact that that's an image, which you can kind of guess from JPEG. I suppose it might be good validation that it's actually a real link, but... Hmm. Hmm. Who knows? Right. So... How do we do... This? So... Like, the bit I remember... The bit I remember from school... Is if we have... Um, a couple of normalized vectors, the dot product between this two is equivalent of projecting um, the first vector down onto the second, which you can then use to scale the components of this to give you the, um, the 3D vector. So we could scale this by that result and that would give us a 3D vector of water flowing downhill. But does that just apply in 3D? Can we just do that? I don't know. We need... Okay, let's think about it. If anyone knows the answer to this, please do shout out. The idea is we've got... Um, we have our terrain, which is a lot of heights. 
um, we have a 2D velocity vector and we want to turn that into a 3D vector that just... They, actually, can we just... Wait a second, if we just... If we just set the Y component to be the difference between here and here, then we will have the right drop and... Hmm. Like it will be longer than it was originally, but it will be the right amount down. Then could we just normalize it and scale it again? <laughs> if you upgrade a vector, you need to define a plane to project onto. Yeah, well, that like, that's um, that's what I'm thinking. But I can't remember off the top of my head how to do it. So um, I don't know. So if someone wants to do that googling while I just have a ponder here, I would be very grateful. Because that's the thing, if, if the vectors, like, we're at a given point, and we have a vector in 2D, but we have two different heights, so it's not a single plane, it's projecting onto one of the planes. So we'll have to pick one or something. You basically have to conjure a dimension out of thin air. Oh, basically, thank you. Yeah, let's just take the, um... Let's take the height difference. Where is that going to be? Oh, man. I should know this. You're really bugging me that I don't know this. What have we got? We've also got the normal. Um... What are they doing in that calc C as well? Because that felt... <laughs> and Riyad, how goes it? I'm a little stuck at the moment, man. I'm um I've got some um I've got a vector in 2D and I have a terrain and I need to turn this into a 3D vector that's pointing down the terrain. And I am just I've gone blank all of a sudden. So, um, I'm just wondering what to do. There's something just really... Why am I missing this right now? I guess I'm getting a bit screwed up by the fact that there are multiple... Multiple points, because we could be at a peak like this. This could be our terrain here. We've got a vector pointing this way. We're using this, we're going downhill this way. Like, the Y component is going to be based on this. If we're going this way, it's going to be based on that. Ah! I don't know. I don't know. Um, But we can revisit this later. I might do that. And what I might do is just get rid of this crap. For a second, because we don't need that anymore. Um, what I might do is just leave it as a 2D. Just say the 3D one is the 2D one with a, um, a Y component of zero. And we will revisit this when I can think. <laughs> Where were we? So calc 2D. So our velocity 3D is going to be X of velocity 2D. And you just hate it when your brain just turns off right when you need it. It's super annoying. I'm sure I've even fucking read the stuff to do this, but let's do it live, he said. Right, there is no applicable method for Z when 
Cool with effect two. Very good point, that compiler. Thank you. Symbol normal is unidentified. Interesting. Oh yeah, we called it terrain normal. Uh, yeah, we're dealing with terrains. I don't think we need to get that fancy about it. Okay, so that compiles again. Um, oh, I will leave the REPL up here. Okay, so assuming we get that right at some point, what happens next? Because I really want to make some progress today. At this point, there is a decision by using the sea capacity. If transported sediment in the cell is smaller than sea, we must dissolve some in the water. So, where KS, oh, this isn't this delightful. Okay, where KS is the global coefficient. So let's go and look up KS to start with. Ah, soil suspension rate, that's a much better name. And it's 0.5 by default. Let's have a look at that. And then... Okay. Okay, so this is what we do if... If it's... Um, if it's smaller than C. Okay, cool, this is alright then. ST is the amount of sediment that's already in... That's in our map, I think. So we can look at that in a second. Does it mention that up here? Yeah, suspended sediment amount at given time, so current amount. Wow, lots of crap. Where are we? That's down in thermal erosion. Oh, we've got so much to do. So. P on G, and what are we going to look for? Uh, calc new sediment. So there'll be some current sediment amount. This can be a float. And some other details as well. Oh yeah, C of course. Of course. Like we all understand what's going on. I don't. If um If the current sediment is less than C, then we're going to do something. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. And it looks like we're returning three values. So this is going to be a vector three. And these are the three values we're interested in. If it's the first one. Oh, just so readable. Oh, Jesus, that's not even... What? BT, SDD2. Yeah, so this one. I am really not the biggest fan of PDF. Well, I'm really, really not the, fan, the biggest fan of the fact that PDF is just used everywhere as if it's a document that's not only, only intended for printing. But oh, that's life. Better check the chat for reasons. So episode 7 will be passing arbitrary PDF paper and convert to Keppel. Yes! Just like last week! Uh, Pocadillo. So vector product um, cross product on the surface normal is the point at that point and 3D velocity vector ought to be zero because they're perpendicular. So I already know that the X, these are velocity vectors. Just come out. Could do. That doesn't sound entirely unreasonable. Like I said, my brain's turned off on me, so I'm not sure. Uh, I think you need to scale down the 2D vector by the sign of the angle between the 2D vector and the plane, which also makes sense. Yeah, that does. Um, Hey, that's not... Yeah, then the Y component would just be in the difference in heights. And then we have to just pick which height difference we're dealing with based on the direction, I suppose. Um... 
Yeah. Oh, di- unless it's the difference in heights in... Oh. Thank you so much, by the way. I will come back to that. I'm going to pound through this until we... Um... Cool. So if the question was how to get a vector with a given length to, um, to point in the terrain direction... Ooh. Looks like someone's done it for me. Terrain point A, terrain point B. Yes, uh, we're going to have to pick which terrain points. That's the thing, Darius. I mean, automatically. Brad. <laughs> yes, let's not, let's not. Oh, man, passing PDS, that just brings back horrible memories. Um, damn, I need a Predit plugin for chat, man, feel you. I need Predit everywhere. This is awesome, though. Like, if you work it out by the end of the stream, it's going in. Otherwise, we'll just fix that tomorrow. Oh, I'm on the wrong computer again. Let's switch back before I just pause the stream. How is this for you guys, by the way? I know this is a... It, it, it's an odd one. This is one of those times I was thinking, why do people want to watch this? But if you guys are happy, that's awesome. I'm, I'm doing what I'd be doing anyway, so this is great for me. <laughs> Um, so, what do we return? Turns that S1 and D3. Okay, so the first one is... What is RT at this point? Have I just forgotten something obvious? Probably. Oh, wait, no, hold on. RTXY is... My well, KS is, is the global coefficient. Hold on there. If KS is the global coefficient, then why is it being... Oh, yeah, sorry. I can see now. I was reading this like code, not like maths. That's not a function call, Chris. <laughs> it's just a multiply. Okay, so that this RT bit here, is this what's defined? Wait a second, this must be something we've done before. But it doesn't stand out. Da, 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 da. We lower the R local hardness coefficient. Okay. Blimey. There is a lot to do. Um, local hardness for now, I'm just going to have... Um, just be constant. I'm going to say 0.5 because I don't know a good value for this yet and I don't think this gives us any clues. Nope. That's it. It's just constant for now. Local hardness is going to be 0.5 and then we will parameterize that later basically based on um, position. Hardness is local hardness. And then we've got KS, which we did just now. KS was, oh no, KS was that. Oh no, K, hold on, what? Am I reading the wrong thing? Okay, but KS is the global coefficient. Oh. And that was the soil suspension rate, I think. Yes, okay. Let's just make a note that that's KS. And then the other one we're going to need in a minute is KD. Deposition speed. Oh, not KD max. 
sediment deposition rate. Oh, I love how much these overlap. Just fantastic. This default value is one. One. Okay. So I've got the, yes, the correct one to start with. It is going to be multiply. Um, let's write it like they've got it. So KS, which was soil suspension rate, and then, oh god, here we go. Multiplied by ah, C and ST, which is the current sediment, I think. I think that's what we were just calculating down here. Yeah, ST was... Where are you? Yeah, no, that was correct. And I think I'm going to have to use ST because these variable names are just going to get unwieldy otherwise. Uh, so current sediment is ST. Put that down there, and then we can look at RT, which was local hardness. And then the last thing was minus BT minus delta time. No, no, this is multiplied by delta time. Delta time. Oh, God. Was it delta time? Or have I just been calling it time delta everywhere else? I have. Okay. Oh, blimey. Now, oh, man, PQPDB. PQPQDB. Man, that is just like, it's a, a name crafted to be short, but impossible to say consistently. So PQ, uh, mostly curious about how Keppel works. I'd like to build some technology for mathematical analysis, and it seems to assist with exactly that. Um, hey, if you're sticking it on the GPU, it could be all right. Um, but it's, again, it's just, uh, Lisp is really where the, the power is coming from. The, the Kepley stuff is cool, but it just makes, makes the APIs nice. Darius, okay, could someone explain the problem? I'm guessing this is the uh, vector problem that we're talking about before. I'll come back to that. Actually, I'll talk about it now. We have um, a terrain. Whoops. Am I on the wrong computer again? Nope. Then why isn't this working? Interesting. Let's just restart. Oh, I see. My um, machine, my USB switching just went janky for a second there. Interesting. We have a terrain that's made of heights. So we've got a height map, we've got a load of positions. And this is the position we're currently dealing with. And we have calculated for it a, um, a 2D vector which describes where the water's flowing. Um, but we want to make it a 3D vector um, which incorporates the, um, yeah, the height of the terrain. So we want to turn this into this basically. And it's probably just a couple of dot products um, to do the projection and multiply by the length of the vector. And I just can't remember right now how to do it properly. And so, um, yeah, people are trying to work out how it's done. Um, whoops, let's... But right now I'm losing control of even, uh, in this part of the stream. Okay, right, back to chat. Enough doodling. Oh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it anyway. Um. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's, everyone's just keeping track of how confused I look at a given moment right now. So, uh, um, well, we will have to incorporate Darius. We will have to incorporate the fact it could flow into any of the four, uh, yeah, or any of the eight, eight neighbors, really. But um, I don't mind if it only takes into account four of them. The top, bottom, left, and right; those will be the ones we have heights for easily available. Um, PQ, I, I mean, I, I really hope this makes um, learning GL easy. I mean, this one at the moment is just, this is me trying to learn a thing, so it's probably not the best example of it being used well. But it is fun. It is fun. And I'm, I'm surprised, actually, at how, how stable it's been recently. I'm sure it's just because I'm doing things. I'm not pushing it at the moment, but we shall see. Right. Where was I? Um... Time delta, we did this bit, and so all we need now is to minus BT, whatever that was. What was BT? I don't know. Oh wait, B, wasn't it B like water depth or something? Terrain height. Oh yeah, of course it's terrain height. Yeah, of course we're, we're changing the terrain height. So the new terrain height is, um, Train heights. Oh, okay, yeah, so it's this minus this or something. Why not? There we go. Cool, so that's the first component. And the others will be a bit easier now because it's mostly the same. In fact, this is exactly the same in these three. So let's just. And so is the, oh yeah, this whole, this whole chunk here is exactly the same. So, fine. Um, we'll just call it sed for now. Something to do with sediment. So yes, of course it is, it is the amount of sediment that's been picked up. Because that's removing some sediment from the terrain height. And then the other two are just... So this S1 is the new amount of sediment, which is interesting that... Oh yeah, so this is the add the current sediment to Z, and the last component is D3, which is the water depth. Okay, yes, so we also have to increase the depth of the water by the amount of sediment we've dropped in. Otherwise, we remove some height from the terrain, which causes the water to drop, which causes the water from neighboring cells to flow in. Um, but then, so that gets some oscillation there as that's happening all over the place. And then water, then the water at some point is going to deposit the sediment, and then it's suddenly going to gain height, and you get these weird oscillations. So fuck that. We're not going to do that. We're just going to take the water height and add on set as well. Okay, so that's what they're doing there. And then what do the other ones look like? I'm guessing similar. Ah, yeah, look at that. That's fine. Thinks there's going to be a lot of post stream cleanup, but oh well. Um, hardness. No, Katie is something else. This is. This was the other thing. Sediment. Deposition rates. Well, 
multiply by, oh yeah, so this is fine. There's really no point having that there. Same with this one, really, but this will do. Time delta um, times deposition rate times, oh wait, st minus c. There you go. And that's the second thing, and so that is going to be, what have we got here? Um, terrain height plus z2. Okay, yeah, it's the exact inverse. So terrain height plus z2. And the other ones are minus. So current sediment minus z2 minus water height by z2. So we return... New terrain height, um, new sediment height, new sediment amount, whatever. And D3, which is the new water height. Okay. As a vector. Is that what we want? Maybe. We could re just return this as multiple values and then do a multiple value bind on it. Which might actually be sensible, because otherwise we're going to have to unpack these straight away. Now let's see if we can scrub the compiler. This will be a nice place. Let me just compile this first to make sure. Simple hardness is identified. Why? Oh yeah, of course. Terrain height is unidentified. Yes, I need to pass that in. Water height is unidentified. It is indeed. And then it compiles. Sure. And get this out of the way because it's just getting annoying. Um. So this is actually a road sediment. And if that compiles, does this. This is where I get kind of nervous is the more weirdy features of my compiler, which like handling the multiple value returns properly. Meh. Oh yeah. Yep, that's fine. We'll see what code that turns into when we look at it a little later. So then we can do multiple value bind. Oh, wait a second, I haven't got, um, I forget every week, concurrent hints. So we erode sediment, we pass in, oh nice. Let's get sediment amount, which is here. Where do we use this? Only there, so we got. Current sediment, terrain height, water height, time delta, and C. And the things it returned were Okay, so we've got some new values. So we're gonna call that, we're gonna erode, we're gonna bind the return values into these variables. Then we gotta see what we have to do next. Okay, so that bit's done. Thus, after the subtraction of the overall water, this is just telling us why water has to have the sediment height added. We clamped the dissolved amount of water to the height in the cell. So they're saying that their new RT Prevent negative water heights in equation 12c. This one. Where is it? 
We clamp the dissolved amount of water. Dissolved amount to water height. Okay. We clamped the dissolved amount to water height in the cell. Hmm. I'm guessing that dissolved amount is everything except. So where is it? Here. We have the sediment. So we should clamp this between zero and water height. Sure, fine, what else? Actually, I'm kind of interested what code came out of this. Ooh, it didn't like that. What the hell just happened? This is new? In some horrible recursive loop or something. Very strange. Yeah, I'm just... It's just freaking out on me. Oh well, that's a... Pull spec common. Yeah. There's something really dumb going on here. Oh well, I'll fix that. Another day. I guess I won't know what the code is right now. It's kind of annoying though. I want to know what it is. Let's... Capital.pipelines... Um, you... Funk specs. Yeah. And which one was it? The road sediment. Yeah, this one. How handy. Uh, compiled stage. There it is. That'll do. Ooh, quite a bit. Okay. Oh no, here is the function here. Oh yeah, that makes sense. There's a load of out variables up here, and it just puts the data in. That's actually all right. Yeah, I'm fine with that code. And there's local hardness. Huh. Cool. I have a vague idea of why that is recursive looping, which is really stupid, but at least I know roughly what it is, and I'll get to that soon. Right! <laughs> Said to we're on the right path. No. No. Um, oh well, we've grepped to orc to... This is what I get for stupid variable names. I make them long and they're too long. Make them short. Can I get anything done with Kepler if I'm using an Intel HD 4400? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Um, basically, if it supports higher than GL 3.3, um, it gives you a core context, then yeah, it's totally fine for totally fine for Kepler. I test some of my stuff on an Intel Nook, and I can't remember what GPU's in this thing, but yeah, it's it works. It works. Okay. Right. That is done. So. Bloody hell. Okay, so we lower the hardness. I'm not going to modify local hardness yet. Because that involves another texture map which describes for every area of the map how hard the terrain is. Fuck that. We are not doing that right now. For our min is the lower limit of hardness. Oh yeah, I wonder what they have for our min. Do they have any stuff here? No, they don't mention hardness still. Ah, oh, I checked that earlier. God damn it, why am I checking again? Okay. Um, the next step in the model is to move dissolved sediment along the water using this. Okay. This is an interesting sentence. So the next amount of sediment at the current position is, okay, we need to look up the sediment for a different position. 
That means all of those calculations are going to have to be done, which means that's in another pass. It has to be in another pass. So I think this is the start of pass three. Good Lord. Right. So that means we've got to calculate the final values for this stage, which are going to be the new terrain height, the Let's look at whatever the thing was up here. Erosion step zero. The new terrain height. The water plus rain. The, oh yeah, new water height. The new sediment. And zero because we don't think there. We don't change the flux this time, do we? Do we calculate any new flux? No. So the flux should be exactly what it was before. Flux. And then, do we make modifications to anything else? Yes, we calculate um, the water velocity. And they were saying in the next step, um, they're using, where is it? I was just reading them. They were words and everything. Right, the next step is, uh, in the model is to move dissolved sediment along the water using this is the two-dimensional velocity so i am guessing we need to pass that out so let's do velocity to the zero zero and that is the end whew, of this pass nice so uh god knows if this is going to work this will be interesting <laughs> Oh, it makes me nervous. Right. Whereas, um, shouldn't be, because what's the worst that's going to happen? It's, it's just all shit and we just throw it away. I mean, that's literally the worst thing that could happen right now. And is it that bad? Yes. Yes, that would be that bad. Again, the whole thing of, of uh, failing in private just goes away when we do this. And it's just, oh... Heartbreaking. <laughs> nah, it's fine. So melodramatic. Um, oh wait, so what was I? Uh, I don't know. Erosion one, erosion step one. Um, blitz. Erosion one. Let's do this. Take this stuff down here. We're going to map over erosion one with this quad. We're going to pass in the time delta. We're going to pass in the texture size. We're going to pass in the water. And so we have to pass. We've passed in that. We've passed in that. Um, the time delta. Second, we would pass that in as well. And text size will already pass. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Cool. And that's fine. So this should be enough information to get us going. Erosion 1. There it is. What's wrong with that? Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. So now, where's our um, flip-flop? Shite what we're doing up here. A road, here it is. Let's move this down the bottom. So now we take state zero, and we do the step erosion one on it, and we write it into state one. Then we state one, and we do split erosion one on that, and write the results into this. What are we doing split erosion zero with, um, because when we bind the FBO, we're binding all three textures. So we really should write something into this, which would be, we don't need the current velocity in the first step, so we can just set this to four. Okay. Whoa, oh shit. There's an error that wasn't caught by my compiler. Fuck, or caused by my compiler is more likely. Unexpected word, reserve word return. Did I use a variable called return? Is that really what I did? And my and my compiler didn't notice. Where is it getting that from? Oh 
Oh no, there's something else. Oh, this is something that should have been caught in the compiler. Okay, let's take this and find out what I broke. What I done fucked up. Right, I'm making this a bit smaller because I've got to be able to read this. <laughs> SLDB. Um, and just so I can debug this without... Ah, fuck it. That's no, fine. Where's that random buffer I just opened? There we go. Okay, so... At line 81... There is an unreserved, unexpected reserved word return. Here it is. Oh, shit. Yeah, look at that. I do have mistakes here. Okay, so I have a bug in... If statements. Okay, the, the, I, I roughly see what's going on here. It is in this function. And it's where I have implicit multiple value return. If I do this, is it still an issue? No. <laughs> okay, so that's interesting. And again, this is a time I really need to be able to get hold of the um, the source code for this pipeline. So I'm going to do it the hacky way again. Um, which function was that? No, let's let's uh, go get the pipeline actually. GPU. Oh come on! Don't type it wrong. Um, erosion one. Compiled stage. Oh, fragment stage. This. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. This is fine when I use an explicit return with multiple values inside an if. Yeah. Uh, values nested in an if, but yeah. Um, should I put an if shoot for that? Yes, actually, that will be really handy. I'll just save out. Um, where's that crappy buffer I've got here? Um... Wordy multi val uh, vario bug. I will add that to the ticket later and we will deal with that then. Compilers! Learn how to write one before you write one, otherwise you'll end up like me. Um, oh, caffeine's so good! Right, we are at 20 to 10. Cool. Thanks, Jace. And our terrain is gone. So that did something. It clearly went and fucked something up anyway. Okay, so the first test really to see, to unbreak this, is to, um, well, the first thing actually would be to Reset the terrain. Oh boy, does that die fast. Look at that go. That's gone. So, that's all fucked up. I guess the first thing to do here is to return everything how it was. So, values, um, just do, oh, we'll do the same as we did in the first stage. So, we'll do all the calculations and ignore them and just return the original values. So, it's terrain height, water height, and Current sediment? Yeah, current sediment and zero. Return the flux unchanged and return zero here. Oops. 
and then we will do this and then it works so yep that was that was <laughs> that's broken so which part is screwed up if we do new terrain height here what happens it just disappears so fast I just want to see if... Okay, so that that is doing what I'd expect. So the flip-flop is still working fine. Which I would have expected from the last thing. Um, what happens if I do... I'm kind of interested to see what happens with new water height. Um, and rain. Where's rain? Yeesh. It's just impossible to tell right now. Maybe I should visualize the water height texture and see what's going on in there. Um, yeah, now we're just going to be in debug land for a while while we try and work out what happened. Hmm. Well, let's get it to the point where we can actually see some water. There it is. And then if we do water height, there we go. So that's the new water height. It's just gone. It's gone so fast. That's kind of weird, you know? Like I would have expected. I'd expected that to be tempered by the time delta a little, you know? Oh wait, we calculate new water height up here. Oh, hold on. Then it's getting overridden here. So we calculated D2 here. We calculate D3, D3 here. Okay, so there is a second one, but this is meant to be D2 being passed in, not D1. So. Water height, where it's used in other places, like here. And there were some subtleties around this. I remember, like, C took. D1, not D2, but then this one took D2, so this one should have been new water height. And again, it's just hard to see anything going on. I'm going to have, where's my reset? Let's set the water depth to just be one by default, or two, or some something visible. Nope, that's not visible enough. Um, new water height. Let's just return water height here. Okay, that would have been visible. But this is still just killing it. No! Okay. So it would be kind of nice to see what is actually happening with that texture. So I guess if we look in Where is it? Draw. Here we go. Draw text um I want to set an app of state. But here we're getting the reds as well, and we'd actually like to... Oh, we might have to just make a little debug thing to, to view this. Because I have a feeling that if I... Let's just recompile this and go back here and reset. Oh no, that would have been enough for us to see 
a lot of green. And it's just gone immediately. Okay, so all of the water height just vanishes in the first, <laughs> the first frame. Okay, new water height is taken from here, which is a road sediment. We take the current water height and we add on. So this suggests that this value is very high. At least, I mean, as high as water height because it's removing all of it. No, wait a second, though. No. Oh, I don't know. We don't know which path is being taken here. But both of them are multiplied by the time delta. So they should be... Let's put a, just a crazy low time delta here and reset and see if we can get anything to happen slowly. Apparently not. That just seems crazy to me. What the hell? Chris is confused, as usual. Hmm, let's just set the water to four. Give me something. Let's make it a bit higher. Actually, yeah, let's, why, why just four? Let's just put a shit ton of water on the terrain. And then go down to Here we get a new new water height. And it's it's just gone immediately. Man, I'm lost. This is gonna take a while. Uh, let's have a look. Back to the chat. PQ, okay, so you have support for 3.3? Um, because that's cool, that'll give you plenty, I mean, that gives you plenty to play with. Like, nothing that I'm doing right now requires, like, geometry or tessellation or anything. Um, you, I mean, like, you, you can get a long way without those. Um, so that'll be cool. <laughs> so this doubles as a Vario PR generating session too. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just full of optimism right now. PQ, Vario is the compiler that's um, taking the Lisp code and turning it into GLSL. And Chimera's already answered for me. So that's great. Um, only way to know how to write one? Yeah, to know... Only way to learn how to write one is to write one. Yeah, man, that's it. I, I had a, little bit, a bit of a look at the Dragon book, but I just found it really difficult to keep. There were so many... As, to, as with so many of these books, they define all their terms. Like, it's all math style, so it's all single letter variables, and they're all Greek or Latin variables. Well, they're all Greek variables of different cases. Which And because it's cases, it's really hard to keep a note of other stuff. And it's only on one page at the beginning of the chapter, so you're constantly having to refer back. It got annoying. It was just more fun to make something. Um, I haven't looked at that build your own list. Probably cool though. There was a build your own scheme um, in Haskell project, which would have been awesome. I, I, I want to do that at some point. Um, and then we're getting into good old discussion on... Hey, is Van Laser in today? Hey, Van Laser. Just on different books, which is cool. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the SICP videos. More things in the list. God, man, there's just so much. There's so much to read and write. Um, so much to learn. The one book I really did enjoy, PQ, was there's um, where is it? It's over there somewhere. Let me just find out the actual name of it because it's it's a cracker. Ah, oh, yeah, there it is. It's called uh, Programming Language Pragmatics, and it's a big old beefy book, and it covers so many different things on compilers and all that kind of field, and it's it's just lovely. It's so much easier to read than Dragon. It covers a lot of the basics. And just, it touches on so much stuff and will give you so many links to different papers and books and things to go and research from. It's, it's, it's top stuff. Programming language pragmatics. Um, okay. Right. Got a few minutes left, so I'm going to keep on cracking at this. Looks like it's going to be into a third week. Ah, man. Who would have thought this was so hard? For me, I should have. Um, cool. So yes, we're we're in this lovely bug where water disappears. Is this just because we haven't got? I think we're gonna have to look at the third step. So what happens next? In the last step, we simulate water evaporation. So if anything, water value should be crazy high right now. But it's not. It's just zero. So what does that say? Hold on. You done fucked up! Right. Um, I should have kept that um, code around. Oh, it's really anno annoying not being able to just pull the pipeline that I need. Is it really not working? I rode... What's it called? Erosion one. It's just as well that Keppel didn't actually go into the release, and I'm gonna have to write some tests for that. Oh no, there we go. Pipeline pulling pipeline still works. That's cool. Um, so this is the MVB two. Okay, yeah. So erode sediment. MVB two. MVB2 is a float, yes, and it's passed into a road sediment, and it is the last one. It is return 2, and return 2 contains the water height plus whatever. So that is the change in water. What I don't get is that this is... If delta time was zero, then there can be no change because both of these are multiplied by delta time. So let's just try that. Let's just, I just want to see, I just need to no start narrowing down the cases of where things are going wrong. Um, see, that's, that is just weird to me. How is that happening? Hmm. If I go into a road sediment and just say that this is no change, it's just water height. Okay, then this is something else, because that should have worked. Wait. No. We take the water height that... Unless... Unless this value is wrong. That would be annoying. I mean, like, if this is here... Okay, right. So it's not this function. 
It ain't this. Good. It's something to do with this. New water height. Virtual pipe length is one, so that's going to be one squared. Such a hard one. Water delta divided by one, so that suggests that the water delta is crazy high. Because um, the water height is going to be fine. So this here, if we just set the water delta, let's just check if that's yeah to float, right? Let's just set this to be zero. Okay. Then the instant we change this to be water delta, it all disappears. Okay, so it's this function that's screwed up. We'll get into this soon. Camera is back. Yeah. See you, Marianne. Uh, SICP links. Since we're throwing links in one second, what was it? Um, programming language pragmatics. This is just so fucking good. I love this book. Where are we? There we go. More book pimping going on. Um... Thank you, Marianne. I, I'm sure he's already gone, actually, but that was really nice of you to say. Ah, yeah, you'll be seeing this later. Um, how are we getting into conversations about what language you write compiler in? Whatever you're really good at, and you can... <laughs> whatever makes you happy. Um... Yeah, go in. CL is awesome. That's one of those. I'm, I'm just so. There's so many decisions in Commonwealth that make me so goddamn happy about things that are just like not pretty, but so useful, like go to. It's just. You need it! There's times you need that shit. Um, anyway, cool. Right. Let's. Uh, yeah, you need to think about your users too. Man, like it, it's. Uh, if you're talking about the CL stuff, just give your programmers the tools that you have. Like, if the tool was useful for you, then chances are it's useful for someone else. So, like, yeah, being able to define source code transformations was useful to you. So it's going to be useful for someone else, too. Okay, so this is cool. Like, um... I now know that there is something up with this, and we have... Some minutes left. Grr. So what was with water delta? This is the calc water delta thing. So basically this function is coming out to be... I mean, it's just got to be... It's got to be all of the water or it's got to be so high or something like this. It would be good to know what actual height it's at. I mean, does it just go down to zero? I mean, the, the one way we can quickly check that actually is if it's just going to zero, if it's going, is that if it's at zero, it'll be just under the terrain. Um, so let's go into render stuff. And where did, where's our geometry shader? Here. Let's just not omit the terrain. Okay, it's not there at all. Sorry, I'll get rid of that, um, that draw text thing. Okay. So... So there's the water without the terrain. And if the water delta is zero, it all stays, which makes perfect sense. And if the water delta function is run, it just vanishes. And it's not just dropping down to zero, it's going obviously low. Well, what is it doing? No, it must be going way into the negatives because if it was positive, it would have shown up on the draw texture as just super bright green. Uh, but it didn't. It just gone. So, fine. There's something wrong with this function. 
So we pass in all the fluxes. Left, right, top, bottom. Damn it, this was one of the functions I was more comfortable with. I thought this was fine, so... Oh, it's this one. Okay, so this could have been a mistake. Pardon me. So this seemed to be sum up all the values. There's a delta time there. I don't remember seeing delta time in here. What? Well, that's the first problem. I'm some damn fool. This is going to complain because there is no time delta, which is correct. Delta just floats. We can get rid of that. And oh, Emacs, you don't have to resize everything all the time. Boys, about as sharp as a sack of wet mice. Right. Um, time delta. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna have to. And it didn't work, which is annoying, but um... There's render again. I want my terrain back. Baby back ribs and terrain back. Nope, nothing happening there. Um... Whatever makes you happy isn't good enough when you're active pilot. It's true! I know, I know, but I like it. Um, DBDD talking about lispy job positions. Oh, closure. I, I, I would, I would happily write closure for a living. There's nothing wrong with that. But I love my job, so that's not happening yet. But um. It's kind of a shame that it's closure script running on the phone rather than closure. I mean, just I know they're not targeting Dalvik, but it's kind of a shame. It's like I'm guessing that's a. It sounds one of those things like, oh, it should be trivial, but I guess it's a bigger job. Oh yeah, ABC, ABCL doesn't have an Android target. Guess it doesn't. No. Damn. Yeah, man. Job's cool. Right. Well, it's gone 10 now. Um, kind of bummed that that didn't... Did I just... That, that didn't fix it. I thought that was going to be all my problems solved. Damn it. Isn't that how everything works? You fix one thing and then suddenly everything's amazing? No. Let's draw text bottom left. Stay there. Um, no, it just doesn't last even one round. It's such a shame. If we set water height, it's really there. So it's instant we do this, it's just gone. And that's even multiplied by that by the time delta. This should make the delta zero. Yep, that's right. If we make this really small, it's still gone. So it's... Wait, though. What would that mean? Calc new water height. It's just the water height plus this delta divided by one. So... What's the problem? That is definitely one, and that will be passed up as a uniform. 
Um, some that I'm just not seeing. But that's not a problem. How are you folks doing? I think I'm going to wrap up in about five minutes. So if you uh, got any questions or just want to shout anything out, you can carry on doing that. Because you're all good at that already. Um, PQ, uh, JavaScript doesn't have to be executed in a browser. Just in a JavaScript interpreter or compiler or whatever. So you'll find a lot of, um, a lot of apps on phones like React Native and stuff like this are... Uh, have um, a running V8 or something like this. I'm running their JS. Hey, you got S SPCL runs on Android? Cool. That sounds heavy, but still cool. Pixel Outlaw, I don't care if immutability is a feature, you're cutting your foot off to marvel at the smoothness of the stump. Now, that is an amazing quote to start off with. I don't know, I think, like, what I like about Clojure is it's... It knows what it's trying to solve, and it's fairly consistent in its setup. Like, yeah, I'm not a Clojure user, I'm a Clojure reader. So I kind of look at what they're doing from afar and go, oh, some of that's kind of cool. It's not been enough to pull me over, and it definitely would be no, no good for me on the graphics side, because, like, mutability is so goddamn useful. And I don't want to have to fight to get it. Also reaching down, and if I want to reach down, screw with C or assembly, that's important to me. And it's easier to do that from here than it would be from over there. CFFI is just badass, so. But yeah, like Clojure is, Clojure is a cool story. I, I, I want to see that succeed. It's just another good language. ECL is the only one that can be embedded into a native Android app as an SO. Um, Oh, interesting. Sorry, did you say how the... Okay, DBDD. Baggers, what are you doing for a living? If it's not a secret, definitely not a secret. I work at a company called Fuse. Uh, we make tools for making apps in a way that doesn't suck. Um, and we do... We make native code. So we have a big... We have a kind of stack of technologies. And um, so we have a compiler that's compiling down to native code on whatever platform, whether it's... Android, iOS, or JS, or .NET, or whatever like that. Um, on top of that, we build a bunch of tools and layers and things like this. It is really nice, and it's not too opinionated, so you're able to reach down to whatever language you need on the platform. So um, I won't proselytize here, um, but yeah, it's a kick-ass project, and you should check it out if you're interested in making apps. Um, Oh, has anyone, have any of you played with Overtone? The Clojure um, Super Collider thing? That thing looks cool, but again, I'm not musical, so I wouldn't know where to start with it. Home to Overtone is amazing. Ah, oh, cool. Love to hear more about that. If anyone wants to do a stream on that, please do. That would be cool to watch. Yeah, for the parallelism side on the immutability thing, it's just so it's it, there's just so many things you get to stop thinking about. And if you're doing that, if you're doing those kind of, it's, it's almost tautological. If you're doing the kind of projects where that methodology makes sense, having that methodology done really well is awesome. It's kind of it's obvious. Like Clojure does that methodology well, so if your problem fits to it, that's super cool. Uh, Shimera, so when are you gonna uh, use Harmony to add sound to Kevl? I don't know, man. Um. I, I basically, I'm going to mess around with um, SDL2 Mixer because I've used that before. And as soon as that becomes annoying, I'll switch over. I don't have a need to write any filters or anything like that myself at the moment. Though you do have 3D sound, which is cool. So I might just use it for that. Okay, so yeah, that sounds like a that sounds like a good place to wrap it up. I will probably have a play with this off stream because I really want to get. I'm not, I'm going to try not to do too much more because I like doing this on the stream, even if it takes if it takes four episodes, that's a total of eight hours, 
and that would be like one day on a weekend. And actually, that's not too bad. I started worrying because you know, like, think, man, I've been doing this for two whole streams now. That's like two weeks, and I've got not much to show for it. But that's like four hours. Like, that's okay. That's okay. I can live with that. So if this takes four episodes, it takes four episodes, which is cool. And then um, at the end, we will have some erosion. So what I'll probably do off stream is take what we've got here, find the bugs um, and fix that up, get everything cleaned up so we actually get something happening here. And then I'll try not to do too much more than that. It's a good week for it actually, because the last week my head's been in this. Like I go through these phases of going out of focus, but I also go through phases of I need to write constantly. I need to code all the time. And then I'll have maybe a week or maybe a month where I just can't code much in my free time and it's a consume period and then I just have to read papers and watch shows and play games I fin finished Thimbleweed Park the other day that's a cool game I really enjoyed that that was badass so um yeah what was I saying something I'll, I'll, I'll fix some of this crap up and then we'll do the rest of it in week three um it is okay backers thank you reassuring I should be okay. You know, like at episode 10, I should be I should be used to this by now. Um, thank you, PQ. Um, but we've got... We, like, I'm going to keep doing... I'm going to try and keep doing these streams for years. So, like, we'll go for, like... I should actually watch some of those Handmade Hero things because that dude's doing everything from scratch. And, like, and that is taking a long time. I need, to, I need to get used to that mindset. And I get told it all the time. My mate uh, Ferris... Who does great streams. You should be watching those if you don't already. Um, oh, I'm getting distracted now. Like, that guy's told me a thousand times not to worry about this stuff. But it's kind of... It's just natural. And, and it's getting less every time. So it is getting there. But, um... Ponopim. Yeah, why not? Yes, like, I'm, I'm enjoying this. As long as you guys keep enjoying it, I'll keep doing them. Uh, unless I just, you know, get burnt out and take a month off or something. Ferris. I should link him. One second. He's on Twitch. Dude is smart as fuck. Makes great demos. Um, and does cool streams. He's doing a Virtual Boy emulator in Rust. He was doing an N64 um, emulator live stream for a while, which he will be returning to after the Rust thing. Why is my computer janking out on me? Um, there we go. Um... And, uh, yeah. Dude does good stuff. And so every week he does some um, emulator stuff and some demo scene stuff. Check it out. Really good. I should actually just, um, whatever the cross-hosting thing is on Twitch. Whatever that's called. I should do that. But, yeah. You'd fucking love that stuff. Check it out. Cool. That's it. That's it for this week. Let's do some other stuff another day. And until then, ciao. Now i got to hit the button. Stop.